Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Next Steps podcast here at Malibu Pacific Church. Uh, if you haven't listened to this week's sermon yet, please uh, press pause on this podcast right now and uh, go listen to the sermon uh, that Terrell preached on this week. Uh, it was amazing. Uh, check it out. Uh, this podcast probably won't make a ton of sense uh, if you don't listen to that sermon first, but hey, you've been warned. So again, welcome to the Next Steps podcast here at Malibu Pacific Church. We have an awesome guest here today. Uh, preacher, teacher, professor, Dr. Terrell Sales, everybody. And see, I, dude, I love introducing you. It's just so much fun. It's like, everybody gets excited. There's like applause. I know you don't do it for that, but dude, it, there was something really like electric going on uh, in the sanctuary and people were watching online, uh, just the comments that were happening uh, throughout yesterday's service. So Terrell, man, thanks for bringing the word. Oh, How man, are you feeling? Thanks for thanks for it. I'm, I'm I'm always thankful to MPC and Pastor Andy, um, just being so inclusive and you know just allowing people to work within their within their giftedness. So I'm I'm just grateful and thankful for that um, to be a part of the teaching ministry at MPC. So yeah, That's as long as you guys will have me, I'll I'll be I'll be there. <laughs> well, what are you doing next Sunday? <laughs> 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 All right, so we're in our second week of our new series called Reboot, um, and if there was one takeaway, Terrell, that uh, you wanted everybody to walk away with this past week, what would be that one takeaway? Um, it would just be the, like, the three things that, that I talked about was uh, taking a step in obedience towards the Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. um, and usually when you take that step in obedience, it leads to building trust, and then trust in God, you know, trust in, trust in the Lord, trust in his will, his purpose for your life. And then ultimately it grows our faith in who yeah. Jesus is. Like, yeah, we've been given a measure of faith and we give faith to believe, but like it helps us see Christ for, for who he truly is. When, you know, we take that step in obedience, it builds our trust. And it's usually a step towards something kind of crazy a little bit. At least yeah. it seems a little crazy at, at, at the onset. Mm -hmm. Um, but then as we're working and walking and taking those incremental steps towards towards the Lord, it begins to like open our eyes to so many more aspects of who he is. Mm. that it's just like it changes us, totally. you know, it changes us from the inside out. So that would be the biggest thing. Take those steps of obedience. Um, it takes some trust to take that first step. But like totally. as you take those steps in obedience, it builds trust and then it builds our faith. It grows our faith. Right. Mm -hmm our faith in him that's so good uh one of the things that i was just i was laughing so hard that you're you're preaching about was um when call when god calls us into the hard parts mm -hmm. and uh you were saying uh i'd rather i'd much rather be in the storm that jesus called me than on a beach uh sinning well can you remind me of the exact i was just like yeah. on a beach you know like chilling with the devil you know yeah, like chilling with the devil there you go <laughs> You know, David said, you know, even David yeah. was like, I'd rather be a servant in the house of the Lord, you know, mm -hmm. than anywhere else, like the lowest of low in the house of the Lord, yeah. than like the highest of highs anywhere else. Mm -hmm. I just think it's the, it's the same mindset. And I was, and my point, like from that is that most of the time we're going to be in some kind of troublesome situation. Mm -hmm. I would rather it be a troublesome situation that is orchestrated by God. Yeah. That, like that I'm in his will mm -hmm. there's a lesson to be learned mm -hmm. by the Lord yeah and like some trouble that I conjured up myself you know totally. that's, that's a totally like disobeying disobedient in trouble it's way <laughs> scarier than being like obedient mm -hmm. in, in God's will um so yeah that was the point you know what I mean I, I would much rather be in the storm with the Lord you know mm -hmm. than like just somewhere else outside of God's will even if it seems better at the time, yeah. um, I'm outside of the will of the Lord, you know, it's, it's yeah. not, ultimately it's not. Yeah, totally. Um, you were in the book of Matthew uh, and talking about Peter getting out of the boat. Um, and again, laughing so hard. I've never heard, you know, uh, you're like, when you die, you go up to heaven and you're going to see Peter up there and there's Jesus sitting on the throne over there. And there's only two people who have ever walked on water. Dude, I was dying. I was like, oh my gosh, like he has a story to tell. And then you like were immediately were like, we gotta like keep him humble. Like, hey, but you fell still. Like, you know? <laughs> like I was just like, dude, that's so that's so clutch. That's so good. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
So, okay. So you're uh, talking about uh, being on the beach with the devil or things like that, or God orchestrating, you know, some crazy the storm, but you're with the Lord. Is there like a story that you can think back in your life where God called you to do something kind of crazy? Um, and it was like a storm, uh, but you knew it was of the Lord. Yeah. There's like almost every step of the, every, every step I take mm-hmm. in faith towards God. Yeah. It's always like a complete whirlwind of different things. It could be me choosing to become a teacher mm-hmm. um, from, from the onset. You know what I mean? Yeah. It could be the first step of obedience towards the Lord when he called me, you know, in 2005. Mm-hmm. Like I said, everybody's starting point. You know what I mean? I was a, like I said, I was a fornicator. I was, I was smoking weed. I was doing all kinds of stuff. And then mm-hmm. taking that, that step towards Jesus Mm-hmm. It kind of opened my eyes to like all the things that were going on in my life mm-hmm. that were complete chaos yeah. already. But because I, I couldn't see, my eyes were blinded. You know what I mean? I'm thinking I'm doing what I want to do and this, that, and the other. Mm-hmm. But it's like, man, you're a really prideful person. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, like you you are someone who only thinks about yourself. Every decision that you make is a selfish decision with mm-hmm. bad motives. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So yeah. you, like I said, you, you kind of see yourself. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, yikes. And then it's like, well, how could God love me? You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Then you have that revelation. Like, why would he choose me to love and to bestow this great love upon? Yeah. And then, you know, you have to, in each step of obedience, like I lost friends because of each step of obedience yep. or people I consider friends. I'll say that, you know what I mean? People I consider friends mm-hmm. because oh. of, of obedience. I lost career aspirations. You know, I was, I went to, I was a Pepperdine student. I, um, I was a theater major, you know, I thought I was going to pursue acting and all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. But then like, my, co- my career completely changed to teaching. And then, you know, now I'm a teacher and now I'm, I'm no longer like promiscuous and doing all this other stuff. I'm married to one woman and we're mm-hmm. my wife, Portia, yeah. and it'll be 17 years this this year. Um, Dude, heck yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like mm-hmm. each of these steps towards obedience, like completely like you said, the the whirlwind and the storm, mm-hmm. but they help build trust in the Lord and they help grow my faith in the Lord. Mm-hmm. And that's what he's looking for. You, if you're reading through the scriptures, whenever, and Pastor Andy says this all the time, like there's only like two instances when Jesus, like they're like reoccurring. Mm-hmm. He's amazed. Mm-hmm. It's either like a lack of faith mm-hmm. or like amazing faith, a place in faith. And, you know, like where he's about to do something, he'll stop everything. and He'll just say, like, everyone learn a lesson real quick. Mm-hmm. I've never seen this, you know, much faith in all of Israel exhibited yeah. by this woman, you know, this mm-hmm. Syrophoenician woman or this this woman, this uh, Jairus or whoever, or mm-hmm. the, 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 the the Roman, right? I, he's like, their faith is great. And he's completely amazed by that. Mm-hmm. And that's what he's trying. He's trying to grow our faith so yeah man Try, trying to become dr sales man that was crazy taking yeah. taking the job at pepperdine was crazy we had to sell our house we have to do this we have to move we have to like uproot the family and yeah. all of these things seem chaotic and crazy at the time mm-hmm. but it's a it's a strategic step in obedience mm-hmm. and it builds our trust totally how we're going to find housing how we're going to do this how we're going to do that like you know we believe this is what god is saying yeah that's all i got to go on <laughs> like that's all i have to go on right now yeah and, you know and it takes trust and it takes you know to do that and then he blesses you know what i mean and he and he sh- he continues to show himself faithful and mm-hmm. it just you know it does take those steps and it and it, sometimes it is difficult to take those steps yeah uh, it's necessary, you know what I mean? If we want to truly get closer to the Lord and see yeah. him for, you know, what he truly is. I'm so with you on that one. So many times in my life where I'm like, all right, God, this is chaotic, but I know you're calling me to this thing. Let's do it. Here we go. Um, yeah, it's that same thing of like, uh, Shannon and I were praying super hard. We're just like, all right, you know, what's, what's some what's some next steps that we can do uh, here in the Malibu community and our own family and that kind of stuff. And now we're having a third kid. So there we go. <laughs> No, yeah, right? I know, right? That is completely crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, people are like, so you're gonna be the grandpa or what? I'm, like, no, I'm not that old. I'm not that old. Come on. Not cool. 
we have other male <laughs> families that are like, oh my gosh, I had a kid seven, eight years later than you guys did. You're gonna be fine. So yeah, yeah. yeah so I'll roll into preschool and they'll be like, oh, grandpa's dropping them off. Yeah, so talking about a reboot, like exactly. man, I'm starting all the way back, back at one, you know. Dude, reboot, <laughs> yeah, diapers. Anyways, yeah. all right. <laughs> How do you train it? Oh, it's going to be great. Though. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Exactly. Exactly. Um, the, another thing, uh, man, you were talking about when uh, Jesus rebuking the winds and just, he, you know, stopped it right there and everybody marveled and your pause right there, the comedic timing that you had, man, like they, oh, they, they stood there and they're like, okay, maybe it's him. Like, it was just this, like, again, the way that you're like, uh, constantly just teaching so well, you turn the screw just a little bit and you poke the bear all at the same time. Uh, it's pretty incredible. Uh, it's a, a gifting, uh, that you really have. And so when you're preaching here at MPC, um what would be one thing you would you would want of the congregation you know like would you want them to be a little more interactive would you want them to be more amens uh <laughs> i don't know something like what, what what's something that you would you would love to see here uh as a collective we uh at malibu pacific church i just think like like i said i told i told this to pastor andy as well like I, i'm not i mean like that the, I, I am used to amens. I think it's a cultural thing or whatever. Maybe it's a denominational thing. I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I don't I don't want amens for amen's sake. Oh amens good. because it's truly like hitting you. And I don't want it. The the Holy Spirit wants it. The Holy Spirit wants you to agree when when the Holy Spirit, right, is moving and you hear the word of God. Mm -hmm. And the amen is like, it could be an ouch, like, man, you know, or it can be like, uh, uh, yes, you know what I mean? Yeah. I agree. And, and that's, that's, that's it. But, but mostly like I, I told this to Pastor Andy as well. I said, we naturally laugh when something is funny. Yeah. No one has a problem laughing in church no. when something's funny. <laughs> they just laugh because it's yeah. just, it just happens. Yeah. It's the same thing with an amen or with an agreement of oh. what is being spoken by the Lord. Um, through his word, you know what oh. I mean? It's, it should be a natural reaction, just like laughing or breathing or, you know what I mean? Like if something, if you agree with something or if something is touching you in your heart and your mind, um, if it's something where where the Lord is like giving you confirmation, it's just like, thank you, God, you know what I mean? Yep. So it's not necessarily like, this is what I want for NPC, but I do want NPC to to be in agree like they naturally are they're naturally in agreement with yeah. the word of god you know what i mean even when it hurts right even when it hurts. yes like oh my god uh -huh. when it feels good when it's something that 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 is touching a specific point in their life maybe they were praying that morning and the yeah. lord like met them with his word and confirmed mm -hmm. what it is that they were praying for or gave them an answer to something they're praying for yeah and then ultimately like i said the artificial amen is is just like a fake laugh, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like I, I, you know, like, totally. thanks, I appreciate it, but I know, <laughs> yeah, yeah totally. you know. <laughs> 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 but like, I don't, I don't expect anything from NPC other than to hear the word, mm -hmm. to let it fall on on good soil, and then for for us as a collective to live mm -hmm. it out because the the message is is for me first you know what i mean if the lord gives me a message it's for me first like how am i applying this to my life how am i taking steps of obedience towards the lord how am i building um trust in 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 the lord jesus and how am i growing my faith in my own personal life right i can't yeah. preach something to you guys that i'm not like living myself you know yeah. um, that conviction is is real and then it's scary too because it's like, well, I don't know what God is gonna do next. You know, now I'm gonna have to live it out because oh. I, 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 I proclaimed it to, to God's people. Yep. Uh, so now I have to live this out as well. So you know, I'm now I'm praying like, oh Lord, help me be obedient. You know, what you call, help me trust you, help me help yep. me to grow my faith as well. And it's about application. As a teacher, it's not I can't uh, I can't assess if students have learned something. Right. I can teach something, but mm -hmm. how do I know if students have actually learned it? Yep. They have to apply it. Right. Oh. I have to see them apply it. It's the same thing with God's word. It's not yep. just enough to teach God's word. Yep. It's like 
are we going to apply it? And that's yeah. that's the biggest thing for a pastor or anyone, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Is are we taking what's being taught and applying it? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's the same thing, like it kind of parallels the, the 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 main point of my sermon is Jesus can't just be, you know, like a good guy mm -hmm. or a teacher or some teacher or you know, a prophet or whatever. Like he either has to be all that he says that he is, like the son of God, mm -hmm. right? Or mm -hmm. for me to truly apply what he's saying and and like the ultimately the the disciples, they fell and they worshiped him. They're like, this is God. I, I, I worship him as the son of God. That takes something of a mind shift, a heart shift, and a life shift. Mm -hmm. If he is who he says that he is, you yeah. know? And it's the same thing. Do I apply what he is teaching? And do I apply what he's saying that I need to apply to my life? And do I see him as he truly wants, as he truly is? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so that's the biggest thing for NPC, for all churches, and for myself, and for you, and Pastor oh. Andy, how about we do? I was like, are we taking what we're learning and are we living it and are we applying it to our lives? Totally. One of the things uh, was that was so brilliant too was you took photos before the um, before the service. Uh, can you explain uh, the thought process behind the photos? Yeah, the yeah, photo yeah. Photo. Sorry, yeah. anyone whose photo was taken without your consent. I think <laughs> like, once you walk on the campus, there's like a, a unwritten consent to have pictures taken. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> but but uh, other than that. Um, my point with that, my thinking with that is sometimes we take ourselves out of the biblical story. You know what I mean? Like we mm -hmm. take our, like, I wanted the saints to see that they are currently actively taking those steps towards yeah. God, right? Mm -hmm. Towards learning who Jesus is. Sometimes yeah. we think it's this big thing that we have to do. No, the biggest thing that you have to like, some people walked on water to church today. It was it you know, on Sunday, not today, but on Sunday, because all the things that were going on in their minds and their lives was like a whirlwind. Yeah. But they took a strategic step towards getting to know the Lord Jesus better. I just wanted the saints to see that they are actively a part of this story. They're mm -hmm. actively a part of what 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 we're teaching today, that each person who's here today is they're taking those steps in totally. obedience toward building trust and then toward ultimately increasing and growing their faith in the Lord Jesus. Yeah. So that's why I did that. I wanted to, to see like people just see them coming in and, and taking those steps. That's why a lot of the pictures were people like walking or they were doing something. I think there was a picture of you as well, like adjusting the camera. Um, <laughs> there's a picture of, like I said, even Shannon, just like being so welcoming downstairs, welcoming the kids in totally. and, everyone is taking steps yeah towards getting to know the lord jesus so that was the thinking behind that and i loved it 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 just showed the all the aspects of really what it takes um to to be a church i mean it, it was there's so many moving pieces and so many you know yada yada that people don't see or experience but i really believe uh this body of people really loves to take next steps and they want to see people win they want to see people come to jesus they like i don't think there's a single person here that's like no i want this place to fail you know like yeah exactly, no one exactly. whatsoever um and so just to give that glimpse of all the different things that you, you never know what type of interaction you're gonna have with a person that's gonna lead them to jesus like you you showed a picture of dieter uh walk in uh in his you know the yellow vest and he's doing parking lot he's yeah. the first person that they are going to meet when they walk on this campus if someone was brand new yesterday. And I was thrilled that Smiling Dieter was there. Doing, yeah. You know, yeah. or like you're saying with Shannon, like there, it's all these things work together and that's just the body. It's, that's the church. Um, yeah. Man, it's so good. Um, okay. So as we're closing up here, uh, any last thoughts you had, like after you preach, like, oh, I wish I would have said that. Oh man. Uh, or was it like, no, this is, this is where it is. This is good. Well, you always like, you know, like, Lord, did I do, not like, did I do a good job, but did I do, did I do a good service of teaching your word to your mm -hmm. people? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's an honor and a privilege to be able to teach God's word, but it's just like with my own children, I don't want anyone 
just like teaching my kids. I want I, I want to trust that they're going to do good with what it is that they're teaching because those are my kids. You know what I mean? Totally. I'm pretty sure the Lord feels the same way. So it's just always like, Lord, did I make you proud? You know what I mean? Mm. Did, did this did this act of service, you know, make you proud? Were you were you satisfied mm -hmm. um, with it? And I, I believe that he is. Um, yeah. There's always something else that could go well or whatever. But I I pray that everyone pretty much got the 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 lesson. Mm -hmm. It's like take steps towards obedience. Yeah. But I think the biggest thing was like our difference in perspective. Like at the end of this sermon, we we looked at a, a passage from Matthew eight. I think you referenced it earlier where they were on a boat with Jesus, the storms were raging, mm -hmm. um, kind of similar scenario, right? Um, and Jesus was on the boat with them. And mm -hmm. then he he speaks to the storm in their lives and the physical storm, the actual storm, right? We yeah. can make it metaphorical or, and, and say it's you know, a storm in my life, but he speaks to the actual storm, the wind and the waves. And the, the disciples kind of still didn't get it. They still didn't see him for who he truly is mm -hmm. because their end resolve was like, he did like a marvelous thing um and like i'm still trying to figure this guy out like what mm -hmm. kind of man is this right where even the winds and waves obey him but then as you continue to take steps towards jesus so that was back in matthew 8 so there's there's different things that are happening there are different um lessons that they're learning as they're walking along and then even mm -hmm. in 14 he feeds the five thousand. Um, well, 20,000, you know, with two fishes and five loaves of bread, and they still yeah. kind of didn't see it. And then they're on the boat in this storm, and they think they're going to die. And then Jesus comes walking on the water. And then Peter walks on water with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then they get back on the boat. And then now their eyes are open. They see him for who he truly is, and they yeah. worship him as the Son of God. And that's what I, that like, that landing point is what I want people to see is as you continue to walk with the Lord. No matter where you are, whatever, no matter where your starting point is, be patient because he's patient with you. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Everyone thinks like, I got to be like this super saint and super Christian, do all this crazy stuff. It's like, yeah, maybe. But sometimes like, no, yeah. it's just seeing him for who he truly is. Mm -hmm. That's like the, that's the biggest thing, you know, the biggest thing of why he came is for us to understand that he is the son of God. Yes. He is the way to salvation. He is the way to God. Mm -hmm. We have to acknowledge that. We have to 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 submit to that yep. and, and believe that, right? And then that that moves our life in a particular trajectory from that from that point on. So yep. that's the biggest thing, you know. Just mm -hmm. take those steps of obedience. It'll yep. build your trust and ultimately grow your faith. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, what I want you to see, or what I believe the Lord Jesus wants you to see, even like if you go to the Gospel of John, he writes this whole gospel and he says, like, I wrote this whole thing for you to see. Like I I, my gospel is a little bit different than the other three. And the reason why I wrote it this way is because I really want you to see that Jesus is the son of God. Yeah. And that by believing in him, you might have eternal life. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Like, that's it. You yeah. know, that's it. Uh, yeah, I love uh, man, uh, wherever anybody is in the walk of the Lord. Um, even Jesus is like closest inner circle still didn't believe in him and they were walking next they to him like, next like, to like him. they saw it and they're still like eh, i don't know you i guess you calmed the storm i guess you walked on water. Yeah. you know like and so wherever you're at uh whoever's listening right now um just know that you, you don't have to walk it alone if you have questions comments concerns hand gestures like seriously ask them like that's ask what this them. is about yeah so getting closer with, with the lord so all right. Hey, Terrell, thank you so much for your time, man. Um, we are so grateful for you, your family, uh, your your wisdom, um, and just your friendship with this church, man. Uh, if you want to talk to Terrell, um, he costs about 150 bucks an hour. Yeah. And just get... <laughs> no, just find him out on the patio. Come talk yeah. to him. Yeah. Uh, he's a great dude. Uh, and then uh, things that are coming up here at MPC. Uh, if you have questions about the church, we have this amazing thing called Starting Point. Uh, it's a great, great place for you to go and ask any questions uh, about your faith, about walking with Jesus, what this whole church thing is all about and who God is. So Starting Point, it's happening at the end of January. Uh, register online. 
Again, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or hand gestures, and want to ask some questions here uh, on the podcast, we'd love to get those. Please send those into info at Malibu Pacific Church. Again, info at Malibu Pacific Church, and uh, we can get you those questions answered. All right, we'll see you next week here for Next Steps podcast here at Malibu Pacific Church. Terrell, again, thank you. Thank you.